Hello guys, my name is Ogwoze Anita and with me is Nisha Deborah. I'm going to be sharing my screen now so we can read the story together. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe can you see it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, Bishop was a very devoted child of God. His love for God was amazing, though he was from what you could call a poor family. His devotedness to God made people insult him and question his faith, but he didn't let the insults get to him. He was in his final year in the university, and it was almost time for his final degree examinations. He had faith that he would be able to pay his fees in the last stage of exams. It was already two weeks to the exams, and nothing was coming forth. He decided to go around looking for the fees anywhere he could, all to no avail. He even took menial jobs to see how much he could raise. But his efforts didn't seem enough. He began looking for solutions anywhere he could. He hardly had time to prepare for his upcoming exams. It seemed like God had turned his face away from him. Three days before the exams, one of his roommates, Dami, approached him with a possible solution, a way he could get the money for his school fees. Dami belonged to a gang of robbers. There was a robbery operation they were to go for, and they needed an underdog. All Beatrice had to do was to help get information about the potential victim, and he had to help them with other plans. He was also to serve as their driver. Beatrice accepted the offer because it didn't seem too bad a thing to do, because he desperately needed the money. In the bid to get money for his fees, he didn't have time to pay for his examinations. On the day of his first paper, he decided to cheat during the exam because he was not well prepared. But unfortunately, he was caught and was expelled from the school. He thought of becoming a permanent member of his friend's gang, though he was indecisive about it. The devil never gives you anything without taking something in return. No matter the situation, always wait on God for the best outcome. Can you say about the story of Beatrice and everything with him that happened to him? Now, from Beatrice's life, you can see that um, Beatrice was a child of God, devoted Christian. But he was going through a lot. He was going through a lot financially. And I think he was being persecuted also. Yeah. He was being persecuted. He needed help. He couldn't find help. He was about to write his exam and there was no money to pay his fees. I actually was expecting him to do going around just carry on to God. Trust him. Remember where our topic, um, our test is taken from, like for the team of the year. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5, 6, 7, 8 said, Trust in the Lord with all of thy heart. Do not lean on thy own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will surely direct your path. Now, I was actually, yeah, I was actually expecting him to trust God. Instead of going out looking for a job, and he would have just waited on God. Um, probably hear the, word, the voice of God. If you know what God is saying, know what God wanted. Instead of just going, he just had options of joining a gang, and he joined them. And you see, he barely joined them. Things started happening. He was expelled from school, yeah. He was yeah. expelled from school, and things like that. I'll really say, this thing is really happening. It's really happening. It's not just history. It's happening. Yeah. We, as child of God, we should always, yeah, we should always trust God. We should always trust God for everything, not just academically, not just financially. We should trust Him for everything and also acknowledge Him in everything. Everything you do. If you don't have money, go and tell Him. He will give you money. Just acknowledge Him in everything. Trust Him everything and truly you will see the hand of God in your life. So yeah. Mm. That's it. Yeah, honestly. Bitches was in a very difficult situation. I mean, 
he was a devoted Christian, like a dedicated Christian, child of God, that someone that really, really loved God. And he had to go through people insulting him, you know, and all of that at first. That was just one issue that mm-hmm. God, you know, he was able to ignore, he was able to overcome. Then after that, mm-hmm. he didn't have, you know, enough money for his fees, and God knows what else. Like, you know, probably he was going to be to feed too, and all of that. He was from a poor family. So he had a lot, and he was going through a lot. <laughs> And from the story here, it says, um, and, and it says, Beatrice had faith in God. He had faith that he would be able to pay his fees in order to take the exams. So he actually had faith at some point. But I guess yeah. when he got to three days to his examination, he couldn't take it anymore. He became, you know, desperate and it was difficult for him to trust God at that point. I mean, it was just three days to his exams. Mm-hmm. Wow. But what I would like to say here is that um, three days, three days is not too small for God to actually do something for pictures. Yeah. An hour is not too small for God to actually do something. When you find ourselves in difficult situations like this, it's usually hard to wait on God. But the only way we can wait on God is if, is if we ask God to help us to wait on Him. But there's no other way. He's the only one who can strengthen our faith. You know, so three weeks was actually, three days was not too small for God to actually change Beatrice's story. God would, could have done, God would have provided for him. God would have done something when maybe if Beatrice had just waited and trusted God instead of going into making bad decisions. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Also, I noticed that um, it was two weeks his examination that Bishop said, you know, trying to come and get his fees and everything. Yes. Yeah, two weeks to his exams. Okay, what I can say about this, I mean, two weeks to your exams, I believe that's when you're supposed to be preparing seriously for your exams, not taking up menial jobs and everything. And we can see that that, that eventually affected mm-hmm. him because he wasn't prepared for his examination. Mm-hmm. I believe that he should have said, he should have tried to take up menial jobs and all these things to find for himself earlier. Earlier in the semester, not two weeks to his exams. That was, I mean, faith and work should go together always. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Mm. I believe Beatrice should have said earlier, you know, probably even during the holiday, before school resumed, he, he could have tried mm. taking up his menial jobs. He probably would have had enough time to gather up enough money for school. You know, save up enough money for his fees instead of two weeks his exams. That was like, you know, too close. And even at that, three days, two weeks, it wasn't still too small for God to, you know, surprise Beatrice beautifully, positively. But it's obvious that Beatrice lost his faith. I believe that here at this point, what God is just, the message God has for us that we should just trust God even when it feels like he's. He's far away. When we can't feel him, when he feels like he's not cool, he wants us to trust him regardless. I can't really remember where it is right now, but the Bible says that there is nothing. We'll drop it in the description box so that you can check it, you can check it out. The Bible says that um, God will not allow us to be tempted above what we can bear. He's too faithful. And he's going to see us through, you know, the temptation through the hard time and his faith is going to help us to overcome it. So I believe that there's nothing that comes, there's not there's no situation that we are faced with that God has not given us the ability to to tackle, of course, with his help. God doesn't God is too faithful to give us something that is bigger than us, something that he knows that we cannot handle. And for every battle, every struggle, everything we face in life, I believe God saw it coming before it came. And he looked at us and he saw that we were capable enough to actually you know, overcome this situation by his help. And that was why he allowed it to come in the first place. That's what I believe. So that's um, pretty much it. God has said in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask for things. Sometimes we forget how great God is. So I forget how much he can do. We forget the miracles and everything he did in the Bible. But God reminds us today that He is great, He's the greatest, and there's nothing that is impossible with Him. We can do all things. And we can also do all things through Christ who strengthens mm-hmm. us if we will just trust Him. That strengthens us, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. So um, um, also in the book of Mark chapter nine verse twenty four, where um, it was about a man that had a son that was demon possessed right from his childhood, and then he went to Jesus for him to heal his son and all of that, and Jesus told him that if you believe, whatever you ask for, we don't to you, and you know. And then he told Jesus that, help me, I don't, I, I have faith, but I don't have enough. Help my own belief. So sometimes we're in situation like. You know, like be difficult for us to believe God. It's difficult for us to trust Him. What God expects us to do is exactly what this man did. What He did. God mm-hmm. expects us to ask Him, please help my own belief. Help me trust You. I ha- I want more faith. I want to be able to trust You. And I know that the only one who can help me trust You even more. Please help me trust You. I think that's what God expects us to do when we find ourselves in situations where it seems as though God is far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you still have anything to add. Hmm. Ah, you said it all. You said it all. Believing God, trusting Him. Yeah. And everything. And there was something you said that and now it's not too small for God to surprise us. The minute it's not so too small to, for God to surprise us. Exactly. Just be waiting for Him. Your patience, yeah. Your patience. Yeah. Part of the Bible where they talk about temptation and it's actually First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I just saw it now. It says, Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise and he will not mm-hmm. allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm at the time you are put to the test. He will give you the strength to endure it and so provide you with a way out. You see. He says, what's happening to us first mm-hmm. is, is common. Like, it's something, it's something that people face generally. Mm-hmm. It's something that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. So, look at, Bishop was not tested beyond his power to remain firm. From this, from what we're seeing here, God does not test us beyond our power to remain firm in our faith in him. So, that, and then at the same time, at the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it and so provide with a way out. God has shown us that he will give us the strength to endure that temptation, that test, and also provide a way out. All we need to do is trust him. All we need to do is trust God. Just like our closing remark in the story, the devil never gives you anything without taking something in return. It's mm-hmm. obvious that Richard got his school fees, but what was the point of it? He paid his fees, but he got expelled. So what, what was the point of the fees? That's like money wasted, everything wasted. He got the fees, but he didn't, mm. you know, he got expelled from school. So what was it? What was the point? They would took school away from him in exchange for school fees. It doesn't just make any sense. They would really never give anything without taking something in return. And no matter the situation, always mm. wait on God for the best outcome. Mm. Mm. Yes, <sighs> Okay. I don't know if you still have anything to add. I don't know if you have anything to say. Or, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've said it all. I think I think with this little word, you just work with it. Work with it and just trust God for everything. Everything. Just trust God. Okay. Trust Him for everything. Everything happening in life. Yes. Just trust Him and you will see His hand in it. Amen. So um, we have come to the end of our case study video. Um, we really hope that you were blessed. Yeah. Really hope that you were blessed. Um, remember to like this video, share with your friends and family, subscribe to our channel. Also, I would like you to know that we release new videos every Sunday. I'd like to look forward to it. And on the third Sunday of every month, we have our live game. So next week Sunday, we're going to be having our live game. I would like you to come around. Please be on IG Live all the way with God. That's yeah. our IG handle. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be awesome. Present. <laughs> Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. Yeah. And God bless you. Thank you. Okay, bye. bye.